Hello, my name is Kim Sauer at Productronica 2015. I am joined today by Bob Black from Juki and Matteo Padua from Aseggi. Now, um, walking around the show, um, there are lots of signs uh, pointing towards the big theme and the big discussions that are going on um, in the industry, which is Industry 4.0 or other countries call it IoT, big data, and there's lots and lots of names for it. Um, so it's clearly uh, something that is of interest for everybody, but everybody's got a different understanding or interpre interpre interpretation of it. So let's just start about what you understand of Industry 4.0 and how it fits in with what you offer. Okay. Well, I, I think the Europeans have done a good job of, uh, you know, getting a catchphrase and putting it out there, but uh, uh, on the way here today, I walked by a bench manufacturer and uh, they had Industry 4.0 uh, signs all over the booth. And I wondered really how much uh, valid communication you could have with a workbench uh, back and forth, but uh, okay, they seem to be happy. So I think there's the marketing buzz side and then there's a practical, what really are we talking about? And I think for the customer, what we're talking about is better control and uh, better information from their uh, production and manufacturing process. Uh, so uh, for us, that means that the customer wants to know uh, what we're doing, when we're doing it, uh, are things in, in, in other parameters in the process uh, zone, uh, are any mistakes being made, uh, they want a better monitoring and better data from the manufacturing process and they expect every manufacturer of every piece of their line to be able to hook up to that and give them the data they need and uh, certainly that's a big challenge for all equipment manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely and Matteo for you as a, um, a storage solutions provider is that a similar approach or a similar understanding to Industry 4.0? Yeah, absolutely yes, because you know every time we are going to approach a customer, so we are going to try to offer what we call our solutions. One of the first uh, buried that we find is that uh, we have to be able to provide them also a solution about interfacing our solutions to all other solutions that they have in their own existing factory. And what, this is one of the key points, I think, not only for our equipment, but for all manufacture equipment because you know right now in if you go on a production floor you will see storage solution you will see printer machine you will see SPI you will see pick and place you, you will see AOI you will see fine probe so we see a bunch of machines and every single machine is working with different software mm. so there's no doubt that for operators that are working in those in those areas okay uh, it's it's becoming pretty difficult to be able to handle different kind of software that require different kind of data mm. so one of the key points uh, it should be being able to in somehow simplify everything for the operator so in my point of view this should be what should be the starting point for the industry 4.0 because as bob says i i've seen as well many of these Industry 4.0 is some hardware equipment that I can really not understand clearly how they can think to have this Industry 4.0 in, in hardware if they are not going to make that on software side. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually I think it's going to be, be something that has the touch points across the whole of the supply chain, but um, specifically it, what I find very interesting, it, it fosters relationships between companies. There's a lot of discussion now going on between machine vendors, solutions providers, software providers, um, and, and maybe partnerships that are occurring that uh, previously without this end goal of uh, having the smart factory that might not have taken place. And now you're a prime example of that sort of a um, cooperation or partnership. Tell me what um, your need was initially um, and what you went out looking for and, and then um, you know how, how the partnership with Asegi came about. Well, uh, actually it came about from, uh, from one of our customers in, uh, in Silicon Valley, California, uh, a company called Rocket EMS. And uh, Rocket EMS is an EMS company, of course, but they're a little bit unique. They do NPI fast turn prototype builds. And so the average lot size may be only five ports. So they are changing each line over about seven times per shift. And these are not simple products. Some of them are boards from companies like Intel, uh, where they may have uh, seven, 8,000 placements. They may have 1,500 different values uh, on a single board. So this is changing a tremendous amount of reels and a tremendous amount of feeders in a very short time. And uh, they had uh, just a group of 20 to 30 people 
uh, picking reels out of the warehouse uh, and putting reels back. And uh, I was with the owner I've known for about 15 years, and he told me, uh, Bob, uh, I wish there was some way I could automate this. We looked at vertical carousels, but that just means the people are lined up at a bin trying to pick the uh, reels out of there. Uh, so at that time, I decided maybe I should look for something that uh, uh, would help, and uh, that ultimately led me to uh, Storage Solutions and, and to Mateo. Uh, and uh, we had our first uh, meeting. He drove up from uh, Venice, and uh, I came down from Solothurn, in Switzerland, and we met in Lugano. Actually, we had lunch, a very nice lunch in the uh, restaurant in the casino of Lugano, looking over the lake. And three hours later, we shook hands, and that was the start of our uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. Excellent, and um, there must have been quite a few challenges along the way. And and Matteo, you've you've talked about it that there are so many uh, machine vendors and and storage solution uh, um, sol uh, software solutions providers that each have their proprietary software. So actually, communication between and interfacing between all these touch points must bring some challenges. So how do you deal with those, and and how? Uh, did you develop that that sort of interface with Juki machines? Okay, so one of the I mean uh, the main point at the beginning was not being able to develop an interface. An interface is pretty easy to develop. Yeah. One of the biggest points is being you know finding uh, the compromise from both party and find the reason why both parties should be develop an interface. And this is what uh, happened at the beginning. So um, when we start to work with Juki, one of the first point was how we can communicate. Uh, together how can Juki communicate with our storage solution so we were partners so it was pretty easy to uh, develop this communication together but then uh, we start to think okay we have uh, also not only Juki customer okay we do not have only Kojic customer we have Valor customer that are using Valor customer that are using Panasonic customer that are using other brands so uh, at the beginning we were trying to approach this brand to see if it, there would be the possibility to develop some interface together but th this did not happen because they were you know competitors from us but then the situation changed because this request did not came out anymore from us but from customer side mm. so right now the situation is completely changed now it's our customer that are requesting that the manufacturer are making the interface doesn't matter if they are competing each other customer are requesting that the different solution have to talk each other mm. so that's the key point is now customer requesting that so it's the market that is requesting that so mm -hmm. now it's much more easier to to start to, to work with mm. yeah, and, and, and you know when you have a new product, uh, 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 first you have to validate that there will be a market for this product and customers accept that there's a market for the product. And, you know, today, two years later, it's a, it's a total different picture, as Matteo said from before. And also, Juki's philosophy is different. Look, uh, we're in a competitive business. Uh, we have, you have a couple of our competitors on the wall behind us here that sell a lot of machines, uh, as do we. Uh, so we took a different approach at, at Juki. I don't uh, sell this product only to Juki customers. If a Fuji customer, or an ASM customer, a Panasonic customer would like these machines, it's our responsibility to be able to communicate with the software they're using and give them the functionality of the machine. And we've worked together uh, with Asagi and also with uh, Kajuskin uh, uh, to provide uh, software links to the major software of our competitors. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are not in this business. So some of them may soon be in the business, but, uh, you know, uh, that just validates more uh, that this automated uh, storage and retrieval uh, and tracking and control system uh, is something that's needed and something that's seen as valid in the market and it's going to be a big part of uh, 4.0 because the logistics part of your factory is just as complex as your assembly part. So, uh, you know, I had a meeting this morning with Aegis. They are, are very close to having their uh, uh, interface with the, uh, with the uh, CG product. Uh, uh, I met with Valor the other day. They're doing the same. Uh, I talked to the Siemens people here in Germany. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're going to take an open source. I mean, what we do at, at Juki is I never tell the customer you should use this software, you should use SaaS software. The customer may have Fowler, he may have uh, Siemens, he may have Aegis, uh, he may have his own that their corporation has written. It's my responsibility as his vendor to make my product uh, accessible to his software 
and to uh, be able to be compatible and to hook up. And uh, so I think uh, being open to that is important if you're going to be successful in this because I believe our customer needs to make the decision what software do they need and what runs well in their system. And it's my responsibility to see that our machines respond to that and are usable for him. Mm -hmm. So do you think actually that approach is the only approach to be applied to an industry 4.0 scenario where really it goes across the entire uh, supply chain right from materials management through to the end customer and actually looping back again with that whole traceability um, theme in, in place so being actually quite restrictive isn't going to be the solution for the future. Yeah I, I think ultimately of course uh, choice is going to win right uh, there will be no software company which dominates the world market and there will be no hardware company which dominates the world market people will pick and choose or as I say frequently some people like Ford some people like Chevrolet uh, but uh, you know I think our approach is already paying uh, dividends if you know uh, we're, we're, a, we're a solutions company at Chuki I mean we've been we've come from the placement side but now we sell printers we sell ovens we sell uh, uh, the storage solutions product we sell interfaces uh, if a customer can value, uh, get value from the storage solutions, uh, I want to sell it to him and I want to support it and service it. And if that's all I can sell him, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the customer will make his own decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Matteo, um, what does it mean for your company to, to have such great cooperations and partnerships for the future of your business? Yeah, it, it means uh, having the right uh, inputs to, you know, to go ahead, to develop our products, uh, uh, taking account the different needs of Juki customers. And as you know, I mean, they have a quite big uh, your network all around the world. So there's no doubt that this partnership together gives to us uh, the right energy and the right power to, to move forward and uh, to come out after just uh, four years with a new product that uh, once again is uh, changing a little bit the rules of the market. Mm -hmm. Excellent, and you've um, you've both been uh, very active here at the show together, showing the solutions um, at the Juki stand as well. So, uh, what's been the feedback here at the show for you? Uh, extremely positive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, Matteo uh, uh, the other day had a customer come in from uh, Russia. Uh, who had already written a handwritten purchase order to one of the competitive towers in the show. And after Matteo's presentation, he went back, asked for it back, tore it up, and came down and placed an order in his stand. So I would say that's only one indication of how positive the show has been for us. Mm -hmm. Matteo, for you? For yeah, you, what's I mean, your highlights? I mean, uh, absolutely, as Bob says, I mean, the feedback, I mean, the feedback that we had uh, is coming from the customers. So customers are really exciting in seeing, you know, uh, again, new innovation, it is seeing new possibility to see that uh, we actually did what they were asking, where they were already looking to our existing solution. So absolutely a positive feedback uh, coming out from this show. Excellent. Well, Bob, Matteo, thank you very much for your time today and uh, great success for the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.